Welcome to Phonogenics 101, a Riot Boy production hosted by Jeremy Gloff. The podcast where people who love music discuss albums track by track. Please hit subscribe, and if you'd like to support this podcast, patreon.com slash Jeremy Gloss or Venmo at Jeremy Gloss. And now, on to the music. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Phonogenics 101. Four podcasts in seven days. Thank you to the Patreon subscribers. If you're not one and you want to be one, I'll take your dollar a week, honey. Any or dollar a month. I'm sorry, a dollar. I'm worth a dollar a month. Uh, it pays the bills. And someday I wish I could just quit my job and podcast five days a week. I have so many albums I want to cover. Look at my CD collection. Can, I don't know if you can see it over there. I want to cover every one of those albums. Okay. So tonight we have a special guest from the Blondie panel, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy was also on our hundredth episode with Sharon, who met the famous i'm not gonna say infamous the famous my best friend ann fearman and of course we have david here who's been with us since day one madonna so we are here to talk about the velvet rope i'm just gonna talk a little bit about my history with this album i have two versions of the history the first one is what happened to me yesterday i was driving to meet my cousin for dinner and i was playing the album and i just started like from the first interlude twisted out i just started crying i cried all the way through the first four songs, even the sexy ones. I'm like, oh, Janet. Then we get to the middle of the album, and I just, I had to like, I had to put on my damn sunglasses. I forgot this album kind of hit harder yesterday than it did to me in 97 in some ways. Because with the aged and lived experience that I've felt since then, like, damn, I wasn't ready for Velvet Rope. Um, I didn't listen to it again today. I'm like, I, I don't know if I can ever listen to this album again. It's just kind of ripped my heart out. But we're going to go back to 1997. I was a huge Janet fan for Control. We talked about it. Uh, Rhythm Nation, I loved Janet. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of Runaway when it came out on Design of a Decade. I'm like, eh, kind of a throwaway track. And then when the promos... Now, 97 was kind of when I was living all over. I was kind of living out of a suitcase in Atlanta. I was going up the coast being a hippie with my guitar. I ended up... I don't even know where the fuck I was. But at some point during those travels somewhere... There was a special on TV about Janet Jackson's new album, The Velvet Rope. And the first single, Got Till It's Gone, came out. And I did not get it at first. I thought the concept was, I'm like, ooh, that's kind of, that's kind of reaching far. And I thought the single was, Got Till It's Gone did not catch me at first. It just seemed kind of hookless, even though Joni Mitchell was one of my favorite singers of all time. But I just, like, it didn't catch me. Uh, Together Again came out as a single, and I'm like, oh, lightweight techno. Like, I... Then I didn't even know about, for some reason, I Get So Lonely didn't infiltrate my life. But my by the end of the year, I was living at a noise musician's house who was a huge Throbbing Gristle fan, speaking of industrial. So he was listening to Chris and Cozy and a lot of Throbbing Gristle. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching Daria, and it might have been 98 by this point. <laughs> and the fucking video for Go Deep came on. Yeah. I think that was the fourth single from the album, and that is when the Velvet Rope sucked me in. Her with her oh. little penny uh, ponytail, like Good Times. Oh my god, that classic, the ponytail with the bangs. Yep. That yeah, song, that. like, I was like, oh, holy shit. Oh, oh I gotta Wait, get this This is album. on the album? Where was this on the yeah. album? <laughs> so, I went and bought the Velvet Rope. I think I bought it at uh, I can't remember the store that was in our hometown at the time. Maybe Kmart or Hills. I bought the album. I went home. And of course, the first time I heard the album, I was floored and I became obsessed with it. But it took me till the release of Go Deep as a single to get the album, to actually get it and then get it. But once I listened to it nonstop, and I might have even gotten in, Ray of Light came out in like February or March 98. Uh, Velvet Rope might not have come into my existence until a little bit after that so i had these two really deep albums by my two favorites and it was just at that time like i feel i felt like i, I was getting rid of my earthly possession so i didn't even have underwear like <laughs> i did i got rid of all my boxes i'm like i don't need to own anything i'm not even gonna wear underwear but i had fucking the velvet rope and the ray of light and they're my heart and soul like listening to I, ugh, 
I'm done. I don't want to say anything else because I'm going to break down. So who wants to talk next about their journey with Velvet Rope? We'll start with you, David. I'll just call on people. <laughs> um, I got it. I loved it. I haven't. Um, um, it took me back. This I've been listening to it for a couple of days, and it, and I love to listen to stuff I haven't listened to in a minute. But uh, when we were having that conversation, and you said, "Why is it hitting now?" and I go, "Because we're old." Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I literally was shopping, <laughs> and. I like to walk and shop and do stuff and listen. That's the best time I can listen to stuff because I really tune everything out. And uh, like I was, those lyrics for um, were hitting me hard. And I was like, "Oh damn, mm -hmm. well damn." That was together was, again, right? I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you, I said, "Oh no, it hit me today too." I was like, "I was like, wait." How how long has it been since I listened to this album? Because it's the interlude before. It's the song afterwards that just snatches your soul. And while um, Together Again is the breakout song on, on the album, uh, there's just a lot of great songs on here. And is I would like to go ahead and say that this might be the birthplace of alternative R&B. Mm -hmm. coming to uh coming alive because there was just like when we start getting into the songs we'll discuss but um it was great because i i i'm a hardcore madonna stan i'm a fan of janet i'm a fan of mariah and the three legends served like quality albums with ray of light the velvet rope and butterfly yeah so it's like yeah, you, and what, that's where my what, opinion what can you ask that's where my opinion kind of changed in mariah because once i started hearing like the song butterfly mm -hmm. uh you know when i heard she was covering the beautiful ones that's a sacred song from purple rain and you know what her version's good i was like holy shit you so know that, that bitch doesn't respect anybody she'll snatch a cover real quick and make it better than the original one and people are like th there was an original one you know why she does that <laughs> i think mariah is a music fan as big as we are like she yes. she's a huge <laughs> fan of music she loves music and she has a great ear. Like she'll remember samples and be like, you know what? I'm going to use this sample on this song. And it works. Like, oh my goodness. And on that album, for me, everything was my all. Just I just could not get enough. Mm. They just, it was like, oh. but yes, the Ooh. divas came hardcore with these albums. And let's not and forget. Whitney even was there with My Love Is Your Love, right? Not too yep. long after that. A little late, but better late than never, because that <laughs> album was also really good. I wanted to be like, okay, Whitney too, but it has to be My Love, Your Love. But the thing is, these albums came out in less than a year, for, yeah. apart from each other. So it was like, and then Whitney came out in 99. But still, like, you know, I'm so used to my divas, you know, they make it big in one decade and they're supposed to drop dead in the next and say, we're not doing anything anymore. But these women were like, no, bitch, we have a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right, Jimmy. Um, You know what? I was looking back because I was a Janet fan, but I was not a fan of the album before this. That I think it was called Janet. Yep. And I was just looking at the track listing of that one, and none of them really resonated with me for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it wasn't like I disliked it, but it just didn't, you know, it was pleasant music, but that was about it. But I don't know um, how or why I ended up getting Velvet Rope, but it is the song Velvet Rope that I am like a, literally... That song is, if that were the only song on the album, I would have still paid full price for it. So I just lo absolutely love that song. I think this album um, is kind of like a masterwork, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in its way. So, um, you know, I have, you know, some things to say, and I'm sure will be um, not fly with everyone but that's why i'm here <laughs> <laughs> and she's been with us since ray of light madonna and i hope she stays with us forever because sharon i just love you <laughs> thank you jeffrey 
Dicker for bringing us Sharon. And we love Jeffrey too, who's probably out having a lot of fun at the Hollywood Bowl or something. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Every, yep. every, every Facebook post of Jeffrey is, so, is at the Hollywood Bowl doing something. Um, Sharon, yeah. what do you think of Velvet Rope? You know, it's funny. So let me let me talk a little bit about my trajectory with this record. 1997, I think I talked a little, about, a little bit, bit about this with Ray Light as well. So when I started my, my love affair with Janet, boy, does that sound sexual. Um, I <laughs> was... <laughs> indeed, my friends, indeed. Uh, I was just coming out of preteenhood, and uh, and that was the time when uh, I wasn't so worried about being whether or not it was cool to like Janet. Um, and I really wish I could have stayed that way. Um, and then I went into my goth industrial years, which was like um, it wasn't. I I was terrified that if people knew that I was a fan of Donna and Janet and all of those all of those bands and artists, like I wouldn't I wouldn't be you know appreciably cool enough. By the time we hit 97, and I talked about this with Ray Light, um, I because I remember vividly with Ray Light, like I was like, ooh, this is a good record. And ooh, I'm not sure if it's okay for me to like these things because, you know, what what would people think if I was, you know, caught listening to conventional pop music? Um, and thank God I had Jeffrey because like I would, I would like flip to LA and go to the gay clubs essentially with Jeffrey. And then like there, you know, there was nobody judging me because like I could be whoever the hell I wanted to be. Um, thank God for gay men. <laughs> thank you, God. You're welcome, Sharon. <laughs> Amen. Um, because like I could be whoever the hell I wanted to be. I could listen to whatever I wanted to. Nobody was going to judge me. Um, 97, I remember walking into Virgin Megastory in San Francisco and seeing this big poster with her, you know, face down. And like, you could just kind of sense that there was like a different mood, right? Like there was something different about it. Like it wasn't like this kind of like, um, like unabashed sexuality, which is funny because the record has like, you know, without unquestionably, like it's, it's very like deep sexual moments, but like, there was definitely something different about it. And I remember getting on the phone with Jeffrey one night and he was just like, Oh, you know, the velvet rope, like it's really interesting. Like she, like she has depression and she has phone sex with a woman. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, what did she just <laughs> say? Like, what's going on? Like who, where is my Janet? What happened to her? Like, what's going on? <laughs> you know? And, and it's weird. Like, I remember there was like a period of like, I stayed away from the record for a little while. And, and I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It was because it was all of that. And and it's funny. I, you know, there was a weird thing with me in bedtime stories, too. Like, there was something about it. Like, I stayed away from it for a little while. And I don't know if it was... I don't know if... I, I don't know if in both cases I wasn't ready for them. They went, they went to a place where I wasn't ready yet. You know? And eventually... I became brave enough to to meet them and it took and it took me a little bit of time you know and what I love about this record so much is that first of all it's like think about her age when she wrote so many of these songs because I think mo many of us had the same reaction when we were going back and listening to the record and it hits you different when you're older than when you were at the time when you first heard it. Cause I, I think I probably finally, like, I think probably it was like 98, 99 when I finally sat down and really like embraced the record. It was, it took, I, I had like a, I had a delayed reaction. Um, I think about where I was then when I, when I like listened to the, and, and internalized the record. And then I think, and I think about her age when she wrote it. And then I think about, like what the songs mean and represent to me now. And I just think, my God, <laughs> you know, like think, think about the profound messages in those songs to when you're in your forties versus when you're in your twenties and thirties. And that's pretty significant. Like that's, that's an artistic achievement yeah. because they mean, they're so meaningful. Like, and it really hit me this time, like just how meaningful the songs are. Because they, because they actually mean more to me now than they did then. So, same. So I just think the album is brilliant. Like they took so many risks and so many chances on so many songs, and like there's a there, like there's a huge amount, particularly for hip hop, huge amount of experimentation that I just think is like 
so fucking like virtuoso level you know like like a song that i really love is empty oh, and it's too. so much like there was a huge amount of risk taking there and i just think like like bravo you know so i can't wait let's get into it let's get into it yeah <laughs> so a little historical context janet had to sign the biggest contract of all time with virgin records right like 60 million or 80 million or something yeah yeah, yeah. so you know after the biggest payout ever she delivers the biggest payout artistically ever. And I just want to show some of the pictures for the cover. This isn't your Janet of like control. This is a yeah. different Janet. Uh, even the artwork on the inside, I just want to show a little bit. You can see her like nipple piercings here. And you know, sometimes when people start getting edgy, I get a little skeptical, but I didn't feel that way with Janet. And I always loved, where's the picture I always loved? Oh, I always loved this whole booklet. This picture here. I just always thought that was so such a vulnerable picture. And so beautiful. Then, of mm -hmm. course, her uh, her with that rope burn on the back cover there. But yeah, uh, like Sharon said, a lot of risks on this album for a very mainstream artist. And it was very clear she gave no fucks. It was all about the art. Like, you know, there were some singles on here, but if, if ever art was pop music, here it is. So the first uh, interlude, Twisted Elegance. Uh, Janet's talking how we all need to feel special and it brings out the best in us and the worst in us. Amen to that. That's when the tears started. Because even the last week, like I'm like, oh, they don't value me and my job. Oh, I just want people to feel special. Like, even at fucking 48, like I'm still wanting to feel special. And I don't a lot of the time. So, like, this... I, I knocked Janet for her interlude sometime and I think someone dropped a meme in our group chat, like, if you hear Janet interlude either, what do they say? Either she's fucking or I can't remember. But I think this interlude is a gr great way to start the album. I love like the kind of ambient sounds, and you know immediately you're off on a different journey. And then of course it goes into the song "The Velvet Rope," which uh, samples a song from the '80s. I can't remember the name of it. I went back and listened to it. I'm like, oh, this really is like kind of the music from "The Velvet Rope." But uh, Malcolm McLaren. Yeah, Malcolm McLaren. Yeah. See, I'm so glad we got some experts up here on this panel. Thank you so much. <laughs> but the velvet rope, um, for those who aren't familiar, the metaphor is the velvet rope in like the VIP section, separating them from us and maybe a part of us from the other part of us. So like taking away that velvet rope and showing what's behind it. When I first heard the album title, I'm like, oh, this is weird. But then like once I sat down with it, like Sharon said, once I was ready for it and ready to let it in, Ooh, I'm like getting a little bit just talking about this. It's like, <laughs> like you think when you get older, you get less fucked up. You just compartmentalize it and learn how to manage your fucked upness better. <laughs> At least for me. So, this album, like, uh, yeah, it's it's important. Excellent. It's always uh, this song, this title track. Oh, it's so good. It's the violins for me, mm. y'all. Oh my goodness! Like this was like. First of all, this is a, something I've never heard from Janet, never thought I'd hear from Janet. So this was really good because she could have been complacent. Right. She could have continued in her R&B bag. And she didn't. She literally took a chance and, and it worked. This song is great. It's one of the best songs on this album. It might be the best song on this album <laughs> because it's just that good the lyrics the tone the music the violins oh you no know, it just i don't know it's so good and like i had said earlier this um this taking of r&b and mixing it with sounds that you would not think of that would work for r&b but it works and it works like tubular up. bells from the exorcist yeah. Oh, you know, and Book of Love. That's yep. what I was right. About. Exactly uh, true. Mike Nichols, or not Mike Nichols, the jeweler, but yeah. So Mike that, Oldfield. Thank you, Mike Oldfield. Mike Nichols. Yeah, the jeweler bell sample. I love Book of Love, by the way. If anyone ever wants to love hear them, love, love, love. Albums. Say, if you ever want to do a Book of Love, I'm here for it. And twice on Sunday, we're all right. You got it. You got your panel right here. Done. I love all four of their albums. Yeah. Even yeah. I'm, like I said, twice on Sunday, I'll do I'll do the whole panel for you. Mm -hmm. 
What was that one? Car- Carol, Kitty Carol, or whatever. Uh, oh, well. Candy Carol. Candy yeah. Carol. Oh, Candy. I love it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Plus every day, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like some of them, they're kind of cool because I'm on, I can't remember his name, but I'm on his Facebook. I feel like they would join the yeah. panel and, and talk about yeah. the album. Yeah. Come on, Ted. Ted Odervarian, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, Sorry, David. Just... Back to Janet. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. <laughs> Yeah, the softness of Janet's voice and just the vulnerability in her performance. The thing that sticked, stuck out to this song, even from the first time I heard it, is how unique some of the harmonies she layered were. Those aren't your typical harmonies. She was doing some harmonics, and the way they used the violin was so creative. Because a lot of times when you get like a violin on a song, it's the same generic shit. Um, and I feel, was the violinist named Vanessa May? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What she did on the song is so haunting. I feel like every bit of trauma. Oh God, <laughs> I'm getting the, the fucking shit that I have like locked inside of myself. They're like vocalizing it and putting a sound to it. So, all right, someone else thing, talk. The only thing I was upset about is it wasn't long enough for me, and there were no remixes of it ever. And but I actually found on YouTube where somebody has made a extended version of it. So I was like super happy to find that because that's my only problem with this song is I just want to hear it for like 20 minutes basically because i mean i love the malcolm mclaren sample that looking like a hobo sample is just so deep and like dank and right in there and then you add and who would think to even put tubular bells in there but Mm -hmm. it you mix it all in the mixing bowl add the violins and it is a masterpiece so i love love it i i mean i think i think you hit the nail on the head when you said it doesn't sound like a it, it it sounds like a, a Janet song you would have never imagined, and it's perfect. Right. It's freaking perfect. I love when one of our artists like does something like when, same with Ray of Light. They were making music that I never expected them to make, but the instant I heard it, I'm like, this is what Madonna can be. So all of a sudden the capability of this artist, Janet here, was instantly expanded when I heard the song. Yeah. Who Janet was and what she was capable of doing instantly was just wider. Yeah. Oh, and it's, you know, the lyrics, we have a special need to feel like we belong. It's not, you know, maybe it's not Shakespeare, but it's just such, such a truth. And but it's not, it, she doesn't have to be Shakespeare. Right. Like, and, and also like the thing that, the thing that this record does consistently is it hits upon a certain level of like, she's, she's so emotionally bare in so many different ways, you know, on this record. Like she, she consistently is so vulnerable. Like it's one of the one of the hallmarks of her as an artist. Like she's she's so often so willing to be vulnerable. But like, right. like the, and the funny thing about this, not funny. The, the interesting thing about this record is that she's like, she's vulnerable. She's strong. She's honest. She's she's like raw and in so many different tracks. But like, just her willingness to put herself out there. It's like you don't have to be like almost in some some of the ways in which she's like. She's not necessarily, you don't have to be like, like, you know, like you don't have to be profound to be profound, you know? Right. Because like Joni Mitchell's Blue is kind of looked at as the most vulnerable album of all time, like the hallmark of vulnerability. And I think the right. songs on Dollar Rope are 8,000 times deeper than anything on Blue. And I'm a huge Joni fan. I'm a huge Joni fan. But I think There's- Janet really dug deep here into psychology, she- bigotry. She- Super, super raw on so, in so many places. And it's interesting because I feel this is just opinion, and don't like flame me, everybody. I feel in interviews, Janet is so scripted. I thought that documentary was just complete garbage. She's like, "Yes, um, I, I made an album." Like she just never. I feel like she never shows anything, but she really saves it all for the music. Like I feel like I've never rarely see a moment of vulnerability in Janet talking in an interview. I feel like it's all right in the fucking songs. And I guess that's where it should be for an artist, right? <laughs> like, I think, I think that's okay though. You know, yeah. like I think maybe in some, like for me personally, if I was an artist, I mean, like if I was an artist, like I think you should be brave in the places where you feel brave, you know, and right. if, if you feel if you feel brave enough to be vulnerable in your, in your art, then for God's sake, go be, be vulnerable in the places where you feel strong 
strong enough to be vulnerable if that makes any sense you know like right. like you shouldn't have to feel like you have to bear your freaking soul in an interview like that's right. like Rolling Stone doesn't deserve her freaking vulnerability like that like go fuck themselves so but she's be- never been like that she's she's never yeah. been the type of person to be like uh this is what's happening in my life blah right. blah 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 girl yeah. wouldn't even know she was married she'd been married on these last two albums and we didn't even know it um I I love it. I she's always I she, I understand she's always been scripted, but we hear the Janet, especially right. on this album. We know what she's going through. We relate to what she's going through because we are going through the same. This is so stupid, but I swear to God, me and my friend uh, we used to take car rides to like clubs like an hour away. We're like, oh, let's go to Orlando, and we would just like do mock Janet interviews the whole drive, like. Yes, um, I'd like to thank the fans, and you know, like, <laughs> you know, I was working with Jimmy Jam and Terry. Like, it just went on and on and on for an hour. But I think, like, that's a testament to how true of an artist Janet is, because she's saving her vulnerability for the art, and that says a lot. And it's you know, some of these, some other artists that might go up there and bleed in their interviews. Like, okay, th- are you just you know? How genuine is this? So I don't know. I, I, po- more points for Janet. That to that to me that makes her her lack of being genuine in an interview makes her music that much more genuine to me. Is that weird? <laughs> no, no. All right. Well, I give Velvet Robe like ten thumbs up. I can't say it enough. Anything more for anybody on this one? Well, the next song. Ooh, I might need my glasses because I can't read this font on the back. <laughs> Uh, you is the second song, right? Is there an interlude before it? Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard this, she's like, I'm like, oh, girl, Janet, you go with that low voice right there. Uh, just being, I read somewhere that some people thought it was about Michael. Uh, at that time, I don't think they were very close. I might be bringing gossip into the podcast. Uh, very edgy production. Uh Vocals different than we had heard from Janet. You know, she'd done the mumbling on If, but she'd never been like, and then the chorus has some really cool effects on her voice. I think this is a great second. It's hard. How the fuck do you follow up a song like Velvet Robe? I think this is a good track, too. What'd you all think of this one? You know, lyrically, this one really spoke to me for some reason. Um, you know, I, when I read it to, in preparation for this you know i was like wow these are really some profound lyrics i really didn't understand the one part of it where they're saying letters and i can't figure out what they stand for or what they spell i'm like i don't understand this you know i just i can't get that um the only thing i and it's funny you said that you thought it might have been about her brother because i feel like that there's a point when her vocals start sounding a little michael-esque mm-hmm. in like the bad kind of you know where she starts spitting out the words really kind of aggressively you know and and it reminded me of some of the way michael had done that and i'm trying to think about what about me or what one of his songs or something but um it just reminded me of that so it's interesting if it were about him it, for her to have make a, made a choice maybe to bring a little of that to to this song but right, it was intentional it, yeah all right david or sharon on you good loved it i love this track. Two. yeah i love this track i love how aggressive it is or not aggressive but i love how like i i just i love the message of it i love the i love the grittiness of it like like I'm from the industrial scene. I like I love the I love the grittiness of it. I love the fact that the first time I heard it, I did not know it was Janet singing. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Like I knew it was Janet singing, but I was like, this does not sound like Janet. Like I love if so. Like that whole like that whole vocal delivery was like kind of in my wheelhouse. Anyway, I love the message of it. Like you know, I I don't particularly care if it was about Michael or not about Michael. Yeah, I don't like, care either. Like I'm gonna pretend it wasn't because I love the message of it. You know, it's like a, um, like to me, it's like a pump up song. It's like a pep talk song. So like, you know, like I, I, I just love the like kick yourself in the pants aspect. Mm-hmm. Of it. So I feel like these lyrics are so universal that no matter who they're about for her, 
they can be yeah. for something else too about us. Yeah. Um, like, like I just, I just, I, I take it for the kick yourself in the pants and like, you know, pull yourself off the ground. You know, that was what was really speaking to me. Like yeah. when I was reviewing it recently, I was like, yeah, this is really, you know, this is maybe something you need to hear every now and again. Yeah. yeah. Like today. Get up off your butt and do it. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I love the fact that she was, she was, she was singing it in a, like, like, I, I feel like the conscious decision to sing it in a voice that didn't sound like, like we love Janet for that sort of beautiful, like chi almost child, childlike sort of like angelic sound. The wispy. The yeah, you know, and the fact that she came to this song in such a different presentation, like to me, it was a conscious choice. And like, like it, you know, if if the whole thing of like she was trying to be, you know, trying to sing about Michael and trying to emulate Michael, like, like I'm just going to ignore that. Like, I, I like the idea and the fantasy that she was trying to be confident and different and like, you know, sing it and be and present as a different thing. You know, like. I don't know. I kind of like that fantasy, so I'm just gonna go with that. And not to mention the spoken word being ham in your face, down to the like that was even like interesting beat poetry. That's not, you know, yeah. the whole damn thing is artistic from top to bottom. Two yeah. fucking thumbs up for you. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 love I love this song. All right, so when "Got Till It's Gone" came out, the first time I saw it, I'm like, oh, I just kind of ignored it. But then when I fucking actually listened to it, and I think when you watch something on TV, you don't hear the bass as much. So when I got this right. bitch on a stereo, heard that bass line, and fucking actually listened to the lyrics, when I really watched the video, Janet came out with this album. First of all, like, that's such a black video. Like, she's really, you know, this isn't a pop video. Mm -mm. It's not a pop song. This And it's so fucking good. This went from a song that I thought was a throwaway to probably being in my top ten. And Joni Mitchell, by the way, she has a live concert she did in 98 called Painting with Words and Music. And she did, like, on the acoustic guitar, she's doing Big Yellow Taxi. And at the end, she's like, why'd you have to go and do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So Joni, like, incorporated God Till It's Gone in her live version. And Joni Mitchell's notorious for being a bitch. She just is. Especially in the 90s, she was a curmudgeon. She hated everything, but she loved God Till It's Gone. She's like, that melody Janet put on there, like, she's a true artist. And at the time, there was a Joni comp uh, tribute album, and Janet had covered Beat of Black Wings from an 88 Joni pop album that a lot of people didn't like. But Janet did a beautiful version. It never came out. So Janet was a true Joni fan, and this song is fucking amazing. And in the next podcast, we're going to have to deal with clowns in my coffee. <laughs> I'm, I, I was like, you know, she she gets a go with Joni Mitchell and then she moves on to Carly Simon yeah, and I'm know. like uh first of all great I love it like I do love Carly those, I, I, those those women are are the epitome of singer songwriters you know what I mean and and it just shows it showcases the level of taste she has and then of course on this song she has Q-tip and I love Q-tip a lot I am a tribe fan <laughs> big time so um, she only released the song on radio. She didn't release it as as a single. Hence, it didn't chart. Right. But uh, I loved it from the beginning. It was great to hear Janet again on the radio because I hadn't heard anything in almost two years since Runaway. So it was good to hear. Um, and yes, it's black and it's soulful and it's hip hop and I and I love it. I, it's um. It's a great single choice and it was just, and it was great because you know at the time i didn't know who joni mitchell was oh how dare you and the nerve of me so <laughs> i knew who carly was right because my mom played carly but i didn't know who joni mitchell was and it was a great way to go back and listen to her and see why she's this legend so it was a good taste and an opening for me for her um two thumbs up all the way up well, and, you know, how brilliant are, are Joni's lyrics? Right. You know, I mean, just that simple lyric, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, how true is that? Um, and just to build a song around that sample was just genius to me. And, you know, to make it as R&B sounding using mm -hmm. Joni Mitchell, I mean, it sounds mm -hmm. like it would never work, but I think it works completely on every level. So, I mean, I... 
you know, I love it. Sharon, what do you think of this one? I mean, I thought it was brilliant, like from from like the get go. Like it's yeah. such a such a freaking groove. It's so great. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm so glad to hear that Joni like didn't hate it because like she I loved no, it. I was gonna say I had no idea. Like, and I know that Joni is like uh, very uh, uh, fond of herself. <laughs> opinionated. Joni's very opinionated. <laughs> yeah, opinionated and also very fond of herself. So like I didn't. <laughs> didn't know that uh that she had had blessed it or not so i'm yeah. glad to hear that but yeah like from the get-go it's like it's freaking it's it freaking owns it's like it's a total group so it's like mm-hmm. like like i like irrespective of joni at all it's just like it's it's like a it's a total ride it's so like 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 you know it's just like you just can't help but like you know, kind of do this, like when you're there. So, and it's groundbreaking too. I feel like it was such a groundbreaking sound. It still sounds groundbreaking to me. Mm-hmm. 2023. I mean, and I also have to say like, it's just, it's such an urban song. And I love the fact that it's like, so like unabashedly urban and they're just like, Hey everybody, Joni Mitchell. Right. <laughs> yep. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's Let me dumb. just fuck with it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's pick the whitest woman we can possibly think of to put in this R and B song. So, but a yeah. legend, a legend nonetheless. We're not just gonna put any type of white woman. We're gonna put a legend up in here, right? Well, cool. like, like, like that's that's so incredible. Like, like, like mad respect for that. You know what and I'm saying? It's a full circle moment for me because I got to fucking sit in the fucking fifth row and hear Joni sing "Big Yellow Taxi" live just a few months ago. Nice. So, like, the fact that I got to be there and hear the legend sing it herself, if you could hear past Brandy Carlisle singing over her, but still, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still feel so thankful that I got to see Joni in the flesh with fucking Wendy and Lisa on stage. Like, I say that, too. Oh. Lennox and Annie Lennox. Oh, wow. Annie Lennox and Sarah McLaughlin singing backup. Who uh, who else would have? Yeah. Sarah McLaughlin was there, too? Yeah. They were, they were her backup singers. It was so amazing. All right. Uh, got Till It's Gone. Fucking 10 thumbs up. Uh, again, another daring lead single. Just like That's the Way Love Goes from Janet. I think Got Till It's Gone was the perfect lead single. She could have led with Together Again and had a huge smash. But once again, Janet did it right. I feel that's something she did again with No Sleep on Unbreakable many years later. Just having that really, like, kind of, you know, through the back door single. Love it. All right. Next, we have an interlude with was it with Lisa Marie Presley on the yeah. speakerphone. Um, I get so lonely, and then you hear a little talking. I was like, I thought I was hearing Michael. Honestly, when she was like, "Don't worry about it. I'm, <laughs> I'm taking care of business." Taking I thought it was Michael. <laughs> but then, what's the most? Just like. The Janet interludes got really uh, generic in the next decade, but I think on Velvet Rope, they're still golden. There's still some golden moments. My favorite's from Rhythm Nation. Baby. Hey, baby. But what's the classic moment from this fucking interlude when Lisa Marie tells her her coochie's going to dry up and fall off? <laughs> it's so fucking stupid and funny. Like, <laughs> this high art album, she's talking about her coochie falling off. That's her fucking Janet right there. <laughs> okay, my need sampling "Love Hangover" by the Supremes or Diana Ross, not the Supremes. I'm sorry. Um, God, what a sexy, deep yes. soul song. But this is deep. This isn't like your commercial generic art. This is deep, like I don't know, funk soul. I love the song from the moment I heard it. I still love it. I love the harmonies, the background vocals. To me, it's just a a bed of sensual deliciousness. What did you all think of this song? Yeah, there was no need to guess what this song was about. Like, yeah. you didn't listen to this and go, I wonder what this is about. Is I this mean, about you know, Michael? It is, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's about, and it delivers on every level with that. I mean, the love hangover sample, the way it's used ever so slightly, um, but... It just is genius production on this one. Just love it. It's lush, full, love love it. 
And for a fucking oh, album God. track, like this isn't even a single, and this right. is a smash. Like it's a yeah, it's amazing. David or Sharon? I I don't I can't say anymore. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's two thumbs up um i like it too like like i'm getting lost in the album and i love it and yeah. it's like i don't know i'm a child of madonna so anything anytime a woman is sexual and can display their sexuality without being that vulgar is great for me so i i i give it two thumbs up or is it snow now vulga <laughs> Sharon, any thoughts on my need? I love it so much more than singing about splitting my banana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this song is so beautiful. It I is. love it. But I mean, I mean, and 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 for the record, it is not about Michael. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. I love Chance Royce and like the. I need you. Like, it's just so smooth and silky. Ooh. Oh, Janet, you're doing it to me. <laughs> all right. Uh, do we all give it two thumbs up? Yeah. Well, fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride, you guys. But you oh, are, yeah. Blanche. You are. Uh, <laughs> I like this interlude. And Go Deep was my portal into this album. You know, this isn't the deep. Even though the song's called Go Deep, it's not the deepest song on the album, but I fell in love with that bass line instantly. I love the deep bass. I just love the hook. Uh, it, every Janet album has that kind of feel-good song, and I think we've talked about it's, it in other podcasts. It's reminiscent of 80s funk that I live for. Yep, yes. And 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 um, the video is beautiful because, like, it's like th th that was the first time I was like, wait, Janet is with these young people. And I tend to forget that Janet, Janet at the time was what, 31, 32? <laughs> yeah. But for me, she was old because <laughs> I had grown up with her. I knew her for over 20, 30 years, 20 years by then. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it was just like, I've known her for like 800 years. No, it was just like, I'm, it caught me off guard because I'm like, oh, she's still so beautiful. And like, she had been in the business forever and I had known her forever. Um, like the ponytail, the high ponytail with the bangs and the redness. And, and, and it's just like, and, and it was just, it's a feel good video because I want to be with her and jump in the foam. Because yes. This is fun. This is real fun. Uh, and, and it's, and let me tell you, it's just, it's that bop. It's the one that you go deep. Mm, 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 mm. One of her most memorable singles off this album. Yeah. Big time. It, it sucked me in and it brought me in and I never left. Yeah, this one is a is a like a club banger. I mean, it really is. And like generally for dance songs, I generally prefer a, like a little bit more up tempo, but this one has got the perfect groove. Like, you know, I mean, it's not a fast dance song. But you want to dance to the song. And um, I just think it's, I love everything about it. I even liked the Timbaland Missy combination that they added to it, you know, because a lot of times that could have gone really south really easily. But this song just stands up to anything. So kudos all the way around. For me, it kind of had the same kind of, they're different songs, but. I heard this song and Don't Stop by Madonna at a club. It just has that mid-tempo groove mm -hmm. that just takes me to a place that I wish I was at more often in my adult life because I never visited that mental place. It's more of an R&B dance song. Yeah. Right? Typical dance song that you would have yeah. right now. And right now, at the time, it was a lot of Euro disco that was mm -hmm. out at the time. Right. So this made it different. And it this really was cut through to our roots, to our 80s roots that, you know, a good R and B dance record is fire, and this was yeah. and this was complete fire. Do you yes. feel like it really cut through all the other stuff? Like it just like a like a hot flame. You know what I mean? Like it was so unique at the time and wasn't what's happening, but it was so also relevant at the same time. It was just what I needed when when Go Deep came into my life. It was exactly what, and I even love how the music kind of fades out and her friends start singing at the end. This is a fucking perfect song. Two thumbs mm -hmm. up. 
for go deep. Does anybody else have anything? Two toes. Yeah, two thumbs and two toes. All right. Well, we are now getting into that section of the album where I really started uh, struggling with my emotions yesterday. Um, I remember the first time I heard Free Zone. You know, being gay in the early 90s, for me, I come from a small town. It was really hard. Like, we used to, I said this 8,000 times. I feel like CV Nix, when she's telling her story before a landslide, like the same fucking story. But, like, <laughs> I used to run from the, my car to the door of the club because people used to drive by and shoot at you. Like, there used to be shootings because uh, you're gay. And it was dangerous. And by 97, when this album came out, things started to turn a little bit. And to have my Janet do a song like this that was so fucking open and progressive. Yeah. Jesus Christ. When I listen to it, and I love because it goes like the retro kind of 60s sounds. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. there's like, it's a little 80s. Then it goes into the very modern for the time kind of like it pushes so many buttons. It's so experimental. Um, that's so not mellow. Like, and something I said in our group chat, because you hear, ah, uh, I don't even know if I can talk. Because you hear Jam and Lewis being like, let's get free. And it just reminded me of Prince's Uptown from Dirty Mind. In 1980, he was saying black, white, Puerto Rican, everybody just a freaking, you know, uptowns where everyone can be themselves. And to me, Free Zone is the promise of Uptown come to life. So I feel like Jam and Lewis were, you know, really living into what they came onto the scene in Minneapolis in the early 80s. Just that really progressive human forward message. So, oh, I was so fucking touched in my car. I was sobbing. I'm like, this is just like Uptown. Just everybody belongs. And it's the same fucking message. You know, and thank God for our Minneapolis scene. Jesus. God. <laughs> yeah, this one, when it when it kicks in, you know, like when it kicks in, it sounds like it's reminiscent of another song, but I couldn't figure out what song it reminded me of. So I went back to look and see what it was sampled. Um, and I listened to the actually the three songs that it uses for sampled, and it's like a genius production. It's like how they pulled these out of these songs, I'll never know. But like one of them is like Think by Lynn Collins, which is, um, it, according to Wikipedia, is like one of the most sampled songs there is. And just the other songs, I mean, the way they just pulled the best part of those songs to make this great hook. I mean, because it's not copied from anything. It's created from things, which is totally different to me. Um, I mean, they weren't just like copying somebody's sample. They were actually melding existing musical uh, events and creating something brand new. I mean, this one's like, and like you said, it's very lyrically provocative. You know, and it's, ta it's taking a chance and making some bold statements, but hands down, love it. And, and this is kind of like the the promise of Rhythm Nation still coming to life. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. oh, God, I'm so inspired by this music because I feel so bad about the world in 2023. And I'm just like, I want to change the world and have everything be a free zone. Like, let's get back to this. And that's just me being a na naive idealist. But <sighs> <laughs> but uh, stuff like that just just like you know it hits you in your 20s and it hits you in your 40s i loved the multiple genres on this album on this song alone like mm -hmm. because i'm getting a sly in the family stone at the beginning and then we're getting some 70s funk and some 80s r&b and it's like yo give me this give me that give me this give me that here is free zone. A little planet soul from the exactly like, I, it, but I love it. I love it so much. It works. Not everybody can make stuff like that work, but mm -hmm. this is Janet and this is Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. They have worked together so long that I love it that they can take chances and not stress over it. You know what I mean? It works. It works. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. They scrap it. They move on. You know what I mean? But it works. And it works very well. And this, we're starting, we're starting a section of experimental mm -hmm. in these next few songs. That's why it makes the Velvet Rope 
the velvet rope. This is the heart of the velvet rope that we're going yeah, into right here. Like- we're starting it, and it's just like, yep. It, it was just, it's just like, damn. Okay, wait. Oh no, wait. Oh wait. Oh, and I almost feel like it holds you down and keeps punching you like song after song. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Stops right yeah. in there. <laughs> like we haven't heard a weak song yet. No. 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 But soon. But- yeah. <laughs> it's a <little> good. <laughs> This is where it's going to start getting complicated. But the fact yeah. that they were willing to take this kind of like this was this was a bold and and like this was a ballsy move. This song, but it but it works and it lands and it's effervescent and you know and and props to them. Oh, 10 thumbs up for this song. One of my favorite <laughs> Janet songs. Like this this section of the album actually put her in my heart. For like she wouldn't have been she would have still been there without this. But this definitely dug her deeper into my consciousness. Yeah. Um, As you should. Yeah. <laughs> so the next interlude, uh, what did she say? You don't have to hold on to the pain to have the memory or something? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Hearing my this again interview. wrecked me oh, I know. so yeah. much because I literally stopped and said, you're right, bitch. You're so yeah. fucking right. Look, I'm getting a fucking tear in my eye just thinking of the As you should. Interlude. Because I was like, wait. I, I had to listen to it like hey. me too. I was doing I think I told you guys this. I was doing yoga at the time and then I literally had to stop and I was like, fuck. Exactly. <laughs> now where I did mean, you for stop? Me, for oh, me, sorry. this inter- this interlude actually has a purpose mm-hmm. in its it shift from the last song. Where I think a lot of these interludes, like they kind of to me interrupt the music and they I don't necessarily need them in my life. I didn't need to know she was having phone sex with somebody, uh, you know, whatever. Lisa Marie. But but for me, you know, I think that this interlude really does separate free zone for the next song. And it does. So I think it, this one, the interlude kind of makes sense and works for me as opposed to some of the others. So Sharon, where did you have to take it? Where exactly did you pause the album during this infamous yoga session? what about what that's and that's where i put on my sunglasses in my car i'm like i need to just stop the music i'm meeting my cousin for pizza in 10 minutes this has got to stop yeah so we um the first time i heard together again i thought it was uh generic techno that was just but then when i bought the album and listened to the album and really listened to the lyrics and then when i listened to the song in 2023 i've had so much fucking death in my life so many friends gone this song about, you know, all the loss. I might just have to pause this shit. But this is a this is a beautiful song. And Janice, I mean, it's, so it's so joyous and anthem. <laughs> it's so it's like good. It's an anthem. But you know, it sounds joyous. <laughs> but you're right. The lyrics it's are not, like it's the not, lyrics it's... are like so important and oh historical. And it's you know, like literally, you can't read the lyrics without feeling the the pain that underlies the joy it's such a brilliant song on so many levels like it's exactly like for me like this is exactly how i want to remember people yeah <laughs> you know like for me um this is this is the way that i would want to remember to to remember the people that I love. It's not it's not a sad song. It's it's through joy and celebration. And um and I think I don't it's so rare that somebody writes a song that captures that. You know, it's right. like it's very few people on earth have written songs that capture the exact feeling that like to me is like the exact emotion that I would want which is like not that not like that I have joy in the notion that someday like I'm not some people are very religious and they truly believe that they're going to see the people that they love you know after they die I don't I don't actually know that I believe that but the idea that you know that these people are a part of you and that you're celebrating who they were and yep. what they meant 
you and like that there's a sense of celebration in who they were and that they are that they are the, they're part of you and like I just there was something so profound about that as an emotion and writing a song of joy you know I just it just man it hit it really hit me like a sack of bricks you know I feel like together again in 97 was kind of like boom together again in 2023 boom yeah. like I just was like bawling. Uh, good times we'll share again. I fucking hope so. Like all these people I loved so much. Mm. I hope I can dance with them again someday. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it where she's like, makes me wanna dance. When she does that vocal run. Oh, oh. and the, the fucking it's background cool. vocals she layers are like the angels are right up cracking through the heaven. Oh. Just cracking through the clouds doing those fucking vocals. Oh. Well, so this is the mega hit. Yeah, it's number one all over the place. Um, wrap your wings around me always gets me. So it's like, and worse is when you are missing that person that, um, that you connected with Janet with sometimes. Yeah, and and listening to this song is 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 you know we're crying because it, it you know it's a celebration of life but it's also like that's why the interlude was so important the interlude telling you something yes you know what i mean and it's like i don't know i love it you know it i was what 20 years old 20 years old when the song came out so i had an experience loss yeah, I've had loss, but I didn't have the loss of what she had. Right. Or but that we would that it, we would have, right? <laughs> exactly. But listening to it 20 years, 25 years later, 26 years later, and you're like, this one, that one, this one, that one. And and like it sucks because you know, you, you there are songs from Madonna, there are songs from Janet that will take you back but also bring the memory of somebody and this is what this song does for me two thumbs up yeah all the way up absolutely janet bringing a little bit of heaven to earth Whew. all right let me take a little sip of my coffee fix my makeup that's right get my <laughs> is there any up? irish cream in there <laughs> <laughs> all right we have another interlude. Oh, yep. Uh, online. The next song. Oh, Jesus Christ. I forgot that this was the next song. As okay. Said, get ready to cry again. Jesus yes. Christ. So I was very addicted to the internet. Like, I remember when I moved to Florida, I was actually in a film about, uh, I was in a documentary called Hooked about the damage of gay hookup sites. They came to Tampa and they used my songs in the soundtrack. This is 20, 2001, 2002. And looking back on it, I think I grew up in a Catholic family. So I felt a lot of guilt about the sexual freedom I was experimenting. And maybe I shouldn't have felt so bad in retrospect. But, you know, even as an adult, sometimes I get so sucked into the apps, like the swiping pictures. And I feel like this song hit me harder in 2023 than it did in 97 because we're such a digital world. It's like the more we're connected, the more disconnected we are. And even all the weird funky sounds in this song and all the weird shit just brought out kind of something that's buried in me. And this fucking song, Empty, I believe she opened her Vegas show with it, didn't she? Which I think is pretty daring. Um, this is another one of my favorite Janet songs. I mean, she was talking about some really heavy, advanced shit here that no one else was talking about in music like this. How do you, how do you deconstruct the prior song and flip it and then make this piece of art that works and and is it is this drum and bass what is this that is just so good i i'm i, I like yo, you're still in your feelings i mean my <laughs> only thing i would say is i feel like I'm almost emotionally exhausted after Together Again 
that to be faced with another like soul searching song, it you know, it's just like, oh my gosh, I just don't know if I, I just don't know if I'm ready to dive this deep. Because, you know, lyrically, when you think about those, like you said, relationships, online relationships and things like that, I mean, I, I, you know, I certainly have had those where, you know, I have envisioned some massive future with someone, you know, from an online connection that, you know, I become obsessed with. And, you know, then to read these lyrics, you know, it, it reminds me of those times and, you know, unfortunately it was a big waste of time, but. Well, you know. when I moved to Florida, there was a guy down here already who was a friend of a friend. I never met him, but we emailed back and forth a lot. And he actually like came and met my roommates before I did. He wanted to unpack my boxes and set up my room. And I never met him before. And we talked for hours. And like the second I saw him at the bus station, I'm like, uh oh, like you do. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, uh oh, because you have all these hopes and you can really create a fantasy and mm -hmm. all the blanks you can fill them in. So you're filling in all the blanks with your own, what, what you want it to be. And you're coloring into the lines before you really know what colors you're dealing with. And Ooh, the song, the song is a lot after together again. It and is really giving it to us. Woo. She should. <laughs> Sharon, what do you think of this one? I'm sure my empty. Yeah. I mean, I love this song. Like, so for me, like, I'm not so much like so the lyrical contents of it are, is one thing for me. The thing that I love so much about it is just like the construction of it is so like, like I come from the, I come from, from the industrial world and the, the construction of it is so like disconnected and processed. And, and I don't know, I just, I really connect <laughs> like, pun intended, I really connected to <laughs> kind of the disconnected and processed and and out of body like construction of it. And and I don't know, it kind of spoke to me in that, in that, on that level. And um, you know, thinking about that time period, like it, it, I agree with how where we're going with this, but like it really did kind of capture the zeitgeist of the time. Yeah. And 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 even now going back to it, it, it still kind of speaks to my soul because there is something that, you know, if you think about now and what we've just gone through with like, you know, COVID and lockdown and how like we're sort of like trying to sort of like reach out and make connections. And, you know, even though we're all kind of like deeply separated in different parts of the world and, you know, trying to form bonds and connections and, you know, like we're still just kind of struggling with a lot of the same things. You know, I don't know, like it, it it still kind of speaks to me. So my early days of hookups were on MIRC. Did anyone else use that? MIRC. I use gay .com. Yeah. See, MIRC I'm from was AOL. Oh, AOL okay. chat <laughs> rooms. Oh, mine was gay.com. Oh, <laughs> I think MIRC was pre gay.com. Let me tell you, there was one room for Florida, and I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> or was it in you, honey? No, I'm just no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, it, I was the entirety of Florida for good. <laughs> um, the part so where her vocal cuts through, she's like, "We never met." I love that. Oh, sorry, Sharon, I interrupted you. No, it's fine. I mean, I think um, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the song still speak. I mean, it, it. I would say it's also kind of like the most industrial song on the whole record. So that's part of what, part of my love for it as well. It kind of pre. It kind of like, um, like uh, anticipated some of the the more like avant garde electronic stuff that was coming as well. So yeah, part of why I like it as well. All right, two thumbs up for empty. Well, Janet kicked our asses and then did it again and she's about to do it again yes. how em what'd she say how empty of me to be so full of you and so, then yeah i love that line jesus mm -hmm. christ such good poetry on this album um 
What about um, she takes a little bit out of the page book of Alanis and uh, oh, I said the same funny. thing. Yes, it's, this is are this you ought to know. This is Black Cat the the proper oh, yeah. the proper uh, you know continuation of Black Cat for me because it's these these rock. Undertone. It rocks, but these for. lyrics, I mean, she's going after it. I mean, mm -hmm. she is going after this person. So wow. She's got the, 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 the deceptive beginning, you know. I mean, you don't know what like you, when you listen to the beginning, you have no idea where it's going. And she goes for it uh, like a hundred percent. Yeah, and I didn't know what was gonna happen in the chorus the first time I heard the song, you know. Looking back, it like kind of has that Spanish guitar from like my all from Butterfly a little bit. You know, they're walking on the beach. I'm like, oh, they're walking no, on the they're beach. They're being super uh, exactly. cute, and and he's trying to get back with her, and you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then she just flips it, and you're like, no, fuck him, fuck him, leave him on the corner yep. because we don't need him in our life. <laughs> and then you know, we just got to say it out loud when Janet's like, uh. You said she didn't fuck you. She only gave you head. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> but she said I was like, girl, first of all, we have heard that before, haven't we? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, he only gave us head. Oh, we didn't really fuck. He just sucked my dick. You know what I mean? No, no, bitch. That's cheating. Yeah. This is a really powerful song. I deserved. <laughs> As women, we actually believe that. Like, oh, it's not sex. Oh, I get it. Oh, I'm so Stupid. sorry. Stupid. Stupid. Apology accepted. <laughs> you know what? Bad. As a gay man, that's a romantic at heart. Oh, <laughs> you guys slept in the same bed. Oh, nothing happened. Okay. What about the times you lied to me? What about the times? <laughs> yeah. like, she was like, I was like, well, wait. No, we don't need him in our life, bitch. Where were you holding this out? Because it was like, it was day and night. You're not expecting it. And I'm thinking, is it really her or her subconscious telling yeah. her? What about this? What about that? He yeah. said this. He did that. And you want to take him back? Really? Yeah. Not to like. She was like, myself. not on my watch, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not to repeat myself, but this kind of is the fruition of some of the the rock funk hybrid that was promised by some of that early Minneapolis stuff. So Jam and Lewis, I feel like everything that we saw a glimmer of promise of, like in that early stuff from the time in Prince, they fucking brought it to the table on Velvet Rope and it grew up. It grew up and and you know became an adult. So a powerful song for Janet. Didn't she do this on an award show? More in like later years. I have to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> look it up. Well, two thumbs up for what about? Definitely. This... And Wait, now we. I... You got to give me like 60 seconds on this song. Yeah. Let me pause for 60 seconds. No, no, no. Just get. Let me just. Just give me. Just give me 60 seconds. This. This is the song where. Oh, I I'm have... sorry. I didn't mean I, I'm so sorry. I didn't let you talk. Go ahead, Sharon. You can have just... oh, 8,000 seconds. <laughs> I was going to say, this is the song where I had, I had to take my breather because the, I, I love this song because it's like classic redirection because of the fact that like you go into the song, you think it's, a, you think it's a love song. It's deceptively like, Oh, this is going to be great. He's saying he's going to marry her. And you're like, Oh, this is so cute. Oh, you know? And then she's just like, Oh no, Oh no, no, no. That is not what the song is about. And I love that about this song, but the thing, the thing that I felt coming, and that's what I loved about it initially. Right. But coming back to it, you know, as a 40 something year old, that was really hard for me was that hearing hearing her and hearing the trope of the song being like that she's hearing this guy say like hey i want to marry you and these are the these are the things that are going through her head you know like this guy's saying i want to marry you like i love you and she's thinking but what about all of these fucking lies yeah 
You know, what about the fact that you hit me? What about the fact that you fucking cheated on me? You know? And that, and the conflict that goes through your mind of like, I love this person. I want to believe this person. I want to believe this person loves me. I want to believe this person wants to marry me and wants to love me. But at the same time, how do I reconcile all of those things with the fact, but how do I reconcile the fact that this person is telling me that they love me with the fact that this person has done all of these things? And I love the fact that the conclusion of this song is the fact that she's thinking all of these things in her head and that she finally comes up with the courage to say all of them out loud. I yeah. love that the fact that the song is the conclusion is I say them out loud because, and that's the thing that made me cry. That's why I had to take my breather because of the fact of all of the moments in my life when I thought them and I didn't say them out loud. And I'm so glad that she wrote the song about thinking the thoughts and then saying it yeah. and not saying I'm going to give you a pass and believe you and actually saying the thoughts out loud. And I'm really glad that she wrote the song. And I hope that people, you know, as a 20 year old, I heard the song and I'm just like, yeah, that's all, that's right. You, you say those words, but as a 40 something and having been in that moment and like not said the words, having thought the thoughts and really appreciated that so much more i'm so glad she wrote the song you know and anyway that's that's my ted talk <laughs> oh. and the album if it just ended right here i'd be okay <laughs> i would have been fine as well <laughs> yes but it didn't we still have a little ways to go yeah. so we just ended a whole suite of songs that to me are the high watermark of janet jackson's artistry just the best the best she ever did in my opinion as far as like really digging deep, experimental, pushing things forward. And we're like, how does she follow up the velvet rope with you? How does she follow up together again with empty? How does she follow up? What about? Oh, well, with, with a uh, flop of life with, oh. with every time. Oh, my God. That 1970s string. I was section. all like, bitch, oh, we're back to Dream Street, aren't we? Ho. <laughs> <laughs> um. This, so I hated this when I first heard it. It had a it fucking video. It for me. And yeah. when she released it, when she released the video for it and might have been releasing it as a single, I go, Pake. why? Well, yeah. there's better songs. This is not it. It has never been it for me. Like I always say, she looked great in the video. I thought the video was done very beautifully. But this is not it. This is so not it. This like, is not even a beast. This may be her best album, but this is the flop. Like for the me, it's just, th it's, yeah. The it's, only thing I would give this one is lyrically, it kind of makes sense after the other one, but I, you know, it the shift in tone and it just is sounds kind of dated and and the fucking key change. Key. We haven't needed a key change since yeah. 1982. Yeah, it's it's just a little kind of weak overall. I feel it's like. We're, we're having this really artsy party, then Love Lift Us Up Where We Belong comes and crashes the fucking party. Yeah. Well, don't I insult Love Lift Us ah! Up Where We Belong because that's definitely not it either. Okay, y'all. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I just never liked this song. I never liked it. Never liked... Was she trying to go for another again here? I don't know what it was, but it was something off of Dream Street or, or self-titled because it... It doesn't work. It truly is like a regression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I everything else has been moving forward. forward. This one is going backwards. It's, it's like, hey, uh, I need a pop ballad. I need to prove that I can emote. I need to, but you don't because you've been emoting all over the place. And this is just, it's, it's a throwaway for me. Yeah, honestly, agreed. And you could burn me at the stake because I know there are Janet stands who live for this song. I do not. <laughs> it's just not for me. Uh, I forced myself. I've been listening to this album nonstop for two, three days now. And you know, I've been wanting to listen to Doja Cat, but I'm like, 
uh, I'm like, because I need to get immersed into it. And like, there were multiple times that I just wanted to hit skip. And I was like, no, bitch, you're doing this podcast. There is no skip here, ho. I so feel like, like it would have been like if Madonna followed up Frozen with Shooby Doo on Ray of Light. Girl. Yeah. Could you imagine? Hilarious. Oh my God, I would die. Could you <laughs> just be <laughs> <off> <laughs> <the> <laughs> mess? No, she, no, girl, I, I'll take Shooby Doo. It's like she followed up Frozen with Love Makes the World Go Round. Please, that's not happening here. <laughs> it's just like a, a mess. But it's so um, weird because Janet had established such an artistic presence on this album. Then on correct. the later half, there's so many weak. Tr- I don't know. I just I want to yeah. just oh. edit, edit, like look. Edit, I, edit. I you know I was thinking back when I said, "Oh, the album can end." I go, "No, the album can end because there's a couple of tracks yeah. here that I live for." Me too. But yeah. we are now entering Flopville for me. Like this is just not it. Like and like. I, you know, when it was out back then, I was like, no, <laughs> no. Let me look at the pretty video because it's a great video. And she looks so beautiful. Two but thumbs is, down uh, for me. Uh, thumbs down all the way down. Mm. I give it this. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, ma'am. Okay. I think it's it's a beautiful plaintive song. It's not something that I ever have the sensation of like, Man, I want to go back and listen to, but I get the sense of longing. I wish you would have done just piano and voice without the terrible string yeah. overdubs and stuff. I'll give yeah. you that. But I, I but I I will appreciate it for what it is for that sense of longing of like every time, you know, every time I find love, I hope it's forever, but it's not. Well, I'm just longing for the fucking song to end when I'm listening to it. Uh, I will, uh, I will, I will, I will, uh, I will appreciate it for what it is. It's like a little saccharine love ballad and kind of, you know, kind of like, you know. Well, we've navigated through every time and now we make it to a Rod Stewart cover, which I am not a fan of Rod Stewart. But you know what? When I listened to this yesterday, I didn't hate it. I'm like, ooh. When the hook came in and Janet was singing the hook, when she's not Is changing this her the first gender cover, I don't remember any other covers that she's done. If she did. It was like a song by another songwriter, but it wasn't like a cover. You know what I mean? Like on Dream because Street. Because this is like this is it. Like the original is iconic, right? On its own, and she flipped the script. I love the imagery I get off of the song because this is a. Uh, is she gonna have a threesome? What's she having here? Yeah, yeah. So it's like I, you know, this is between me and you, and you, you. and I'm like, oh shit, and it's cute, but it's basic. I feel and like it could have been a single. Grace, though. The saving grace is is the imagery you get, and I think the way she flipped it was great. But it's it's just okay. It's so nothing like, to, to write home about. I feel like it could have been a single just because it was a familiar song, and I thought she did a, a decent version of it. I think it would have been a better single than every time if she had to release one of these songs. Well, what I will say is, because um, I li- like to listen to things in different places in my house, because things... Like, for example, in the living room, it's a bigger space, so things sound bigger. In my attic, it's more confined, so it's a little bit different there. And then in headphones, it's even different. And so I will say that her vocals on this track really stand out in like the, in, an intimate listening setting. Like her lead vocals, like they're really well placed. So I'll give her that i mean you know there's no studio effects you know no fancy little tricks it's like kind of front and center voice and you know i can appreciate it for that darren do you have any thoughts on tonight's the night no other than the the gender swapping stuff was was i appreciated I'm going to give it kind of like an almost thumbs up like (laughs) okay 
Any other thoughts on tonight's the night? All right. This next song is the fucking reason why the Velvet Rope couldn't end after What About? Because exactly. I can fuck right. with some I Get Lonely. This but... <laughs> fucking goat. This goat of a fucking song. Yeah. Because this is like, get to your bread and butter, bitch. Because this is your bread and butter. If I, if she never, if she only performed one song off this album, it better be this one. <laughs> because <laughs> this is it. Like, it's it's so relatable. Yeah. Because uh, we're horny fucks. And it's just, it's just, it's luscious. It's R&B at its finest. It's Janet at her finest for me. Like, there's nothing like, like who doesn't know? Like who doesn't think? Like I get so lonely. Like everybody had that. Everybody was singing this. This was the hit. This was the last. She she broke the record for most consecutive top tens. This was her eighteenth top ten in a row. Wow! It, it just it is everything to me. It is that's why I said yes. The album could have ended there, but there's this one song here. Mm -hmm. That is everything. And it saves the last part of the album completely. And I feel like that deep soul kind of set up what we get from Destiny's Child. You know what I mean? It kind of was a precursor of what was coming. And it's, it's some... like, I mean, it's for me, it's like the fact that Janet can go like basically toe to toe with Mary J. Blige on this one. Oh, you know yeah. the it, fact it, that she it, it, can... it, it's her rendition of a contemporary r and song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like the fact this that is Janet, like... she she does it. I mean, she serves it. She does it. It's authentic sounding, and I believe it. I'm and I feel like it. what anytime, any place, the possibilities that anytime, any place showed us. Then I get lonely. Comes along on the next album, and it's like. See bitches, I wasn't I wasn't playing you. And I do have to give a shout out to her fucking cleavage in the video, honey. Oh my god. I just rewound. rewound. Oh my goodness. Everything, the dance moves. And and on occasional versions, you have Black Street in the background. <laughs> so it, it just it 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 gives that current RB that yeah, bitch. I've been in the business for 20 years, but I can still school all of your asses. Exactly. Exactly. And that vocal run that's very jazzy where she's like the I don't want no one else. Like such interesting inflections and the, some of the harmonies in her vocals, the the stacked harmonies on the chorus, the song is perfection. Oh. And I just mm -hmm. remember when I got the album and once I finally got it in 98, when it got to the song, then I knew the song. I didn't know it was a Janet song because I heard the song all the time. I didn't know it was Janet. Then I'm like, oh, this, this. Is fucking Janet? Oh, okay. And like instantly like played it over and over. And that Rhodes piano in there, the kind of scratching sounds, the vinyl, you know. God. Ooh. Perfection. Ten ten thumbs up. Ten tens ten. Ten ten ten. Such and a, and toes. Now, I don't even want to say what Janice could do with those fingers and toes that she got us alone when she's no, working honey. on this. Her <laughs> lips are talking. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything to say about I Get Lonely? No. Nope. All right. We are now moving into some more sensual territory. A song that she did a very sensual version of on the Velvet Rope Tour. Rope Burn. This is so Rope Burn is good. I love. I, I think Madonna would have killed to have this song. Amen. Amen. Madonna would have killed to have it. Madonna this would have killed to have two of her songs. Rope Burn is one. Frob is another. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. are like these are some Madonna songs, and they are wonderfully done. Wonderfully yeah. done by Jack. Out Madonna, Madonna. She like did. <laughs> and, and, that. Uh, right. Her harmonies on the chorus of Rope Burn so soulful this is just like such deep soul here but for me the only thing i will say um oh, i, I think that too. this should have been the last song on the album because it like starts with velvet rope and it should end with rope burn you know and we, we, it would have been they would they bookend each other 
I feel like it should end with rope burn for multiple reasons, actually. But well, you know, when I'm looking at what's next, I there's nothing that um, I really necessarily need in my life from it. So <laughs> I could kind of oh. agree with that. But rope burn, I love. I love that song. I think it's a great song. She kills it. My I only critique on it was I didn't like the whole bloop bloop that we heard in Go Deep back here again oh, on okay. this song. The water oh, trap. You're saying. Yeah. Yeah. That whole gotcha. bloop bloop. And it was just like, for me, I just wanted the beat by mm -hmm. itself. I didn't need the extra, extra ness in there. Yeah. In this case, I didn't need it because, like, I, we're coming off, I get lonely and I need. I, I need the R and B. I want to feel luscious. I want to feel sexual. I want to feel these are the, the these are the type of themes that I want out of this song. And the whole bloop 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 and all that kind of stuff just it throws it off for me. I like the kind of vintage throwback sound of it. I feel like they're trying to go for a modern thing with the bloop, and it, it just ends up dating it. And ugh. yeah, that didn't bother me at all. Oh. <laughs> Sharon's like, "Give it to me, bitches." Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. like, I actually love, I mean, one of the things that I like about it is the fact that it doesn't go in your face. Like, Madonna, I almost felt like, was, like, aggressively like, hey, I'm singing about sex, you know? <laughs> and, like, the thing I loved about Roper and is, it's like, like, if you, if you pay super close attention, like, like, the lyrics are, like, pretty nasty, but, like, you have to work really hard to know that the lyrics are pretty nasty. Right. You, know? you sit in there and you're like grooving and you're just like, oh shit, these lyrics are nasty. Yep. You know, but Donna was like, my lyrics are nasty. You know? Colonel Sanders was not invited to this party, honey. I was just going to say, I'm like, Colonel Sanders said it was finger licking good bitch. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, I actually, I, I mean, maybe maybe i was just like raised catholic and like had a little extra like you know trauma around that but like i appreciate it was just kind of like oh these lyrics are nasty not these lyrics are nasty yeah. you know? but i kind of like i like thank you Janet. like understated it's understated erotica you know yeah, i kind of appreciated that yeah <laughs> like oh, right. like madonna how like Remember, if there was a couple of years, a couple of years ago, when every other line out of her mouth, artists are here to disturb the peace. I'm like, Madonna, just do it. Like, you don't yeah, need to say it. Go ahead and disturb the peace. Yeah. You don't have to tell me about it. Just disturb the peace. No, I mean, like, I, I kid because that's because, you know, we went through 50 million, you know, podcasts about Madonna. And obviously, I love Madonna. We love but, her. Uh, yeah, we love her. And I appreciate Stay away, her. Ann Fearman. Stay away from our Madonna podcast. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I just appreciate that, like, you know, we're, we're, we're grooving and like, oh, shit, there's some candle wax. Like, oh, I did not know that candle wax was invited into this chat room. You know, <laughs> like, so it's a fun, it's a fun ride. You know, it's sexy. It's like, you know, there's, there's some wild shit going on in this song. So I will say I would, would have loved a, a <clears throat> Madam X podcast with Ann Fearman, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right, that, Rope Burn. Two yeah. thumbs up. Two thumbs, two thumbs up, two yeah. feet. It's a great song. It's like a classic. Well, when I was in my car after Rope Burn, I'm like, oh, here comes another song. I don't really remember this. And then the song came in, and I didn't remember the song. Like, I did not even, the song did not retain to me since the 90s. It's called Anything. Um, Janet's albums moving forward would always have these long section of sexy, sexy songs. They kind of all sounded the same ish to me. Like on yeah. All for You, there's that era, the area of the album, Demita Joe. In fact, my friend that I used to do the Janet interviews with, we would always laugh how there's like the section in the Janet album where the rainstorm starts. And she's like, Hold me, touch me, feel me. So I feel like on <laughs> Velvet Rope, this is that section of the Janet album. I think it could have ended with Rope Burn. Uh, anything to me was kind of a throwaway a little bit. Is it necessary? After yeah. Rope Burn, it's like, is this really necessary? You just gave us Rope Burn. This one is like, you know, a rehash almost. And not a really good one. Yeah. 
And I feel like even the albums we covered already always had like that one song, like, oh, I didn't remember that one, but oh, I, I kind of like it. This is the one where this is started to be when we're in the territory, like, oh, I didn't remember this one. And there's a reason for that, Hunter. <laughs> I was just going to say, there's a reason for it. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have anything to say about Well, I can't remember the name of it. What is it? Anything? Anything. In fact, anything. Yeah. Does anybody have anything to say? What I have to say is I really love special, which is coming up. <laughs> That's what I have to say. <laughs> All right, I give anything. I don't well, think it sucks. It's sideways. Oh, yeah. I have it's not made. bad. I would never. I wouldn't go and say it's bad. It's it's not, not bad, but it's, it's not just every just time bad. But it, it it it's it's mid. It's so mid. Out of legendary album, a mid song on a legendary album. Could you imagine? And this still is the gold. It's still her best album. Right. And she's got mid songs on there. If she would have ended with Rope Burn and took off everything or every time or whatever the fuck it's called, yeah. this would have been in the top 10. Even in the like, let me tell you, even with every time, because there's always like, yeah, there's always flaws in a perfect album. There's always the, he doesn't even know I'm alive. <laughs> Facts. Okay. <Dear> diary. <laughs> now, I, I'm not sure when I listen to special, I like, I'm like, Oh, I'm feeling it. Oh, I'm not feeling it. like every five seconds. My opinion changed and I still can't figure out if I love it or hate it or am in the middle. Like the beginning is kind of earthy, some piano. She's singing. It's kind of minor chord. Then we get into like the, like the, we are the world chorus. I'm like, mm, yeah. girl, I don't know. But then it goes back to being good. Like Sharon, you said you really like this song. So let's have you start this one. It's like I just like that. So we are the world's kind of an interesting uh, parallel to it. I was thinking there is kind of like a weird Whitney esque kind of I don't know like feel to it, like a vibe to it. But I like that. So like I would go with like it being kind of her greatest love of all, but more the great greatest love of all is more like overwrought. Right. This is, but this is a little more like maybe down to earth than that, which is saying like, you know, kind of going back to the sort of the the universal theme of the record, which is like we all have that like inherent need to feel special. You know? Yeah. Right. And and I don't know, like I I just like the song, you know, I like I just like the 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 kind of like the fundamental truth of the song and and you know, going back to the record after so many years, it just it hit a tone. It hit a tone with me. I like I like the song. Like I don't think it has to be, you know, this this is a great record. I don't think every song has to be like an A plus superstar. I think it was a good song. Like I think I think we can kind of appreciate it for what it was. What was you know? there's an interlude called Sad before. Does anyone remember yeah. what she said? No. Because I feel like it was profound. And I'm a shitty podcast host. That I, I was like profound, but you can't remember. But I can't remember. <laughs> this is I was still recovering. Was it, I was recovering from anything. <laughs> Let me look it up. Look it up. I mean, for me, I think that is what Sharon said. As far as the special, it does carry through the message of the opening of the album. You know, and talking about. So I mean. The content of the song makes sense with the message of the album, but for me, it's not like my favorite kind of song to listen to. And I feel like this is the kind of album like that the weirdo us gothy artsy people are listening to, but like we would never be caught dead with a song like this. Like I feel like, but I I got the Sharon's like you're wrong, Jeremy. <laughs> I really did. Um. The interlude said, there's nothing more depressing than having everything and still feeling sad. That's you, the one, yes. You, you must I learn to everything. water your spiritual garden. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Oh, yeah. Sharon, you've convinced me. I'm going to give special a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Oh, shit. Ooh. Oh. Team yeah. special, Sharon. High fives. I'm mm -hmm. still going thumbs up. I'm sorry. I'm I'm a Pollyanna at heart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, something happened after the last Janet podcast. Uh, I'm so stressed out in my job. I'm so tired. I just was been so busy. I released an album, Road to Barto on all streaming platforms. Um, Dream. Um, but I got obsessed with that Whoops Now song from Janet. I always hated it. And after our last podcast, I'm like, oh, 
I need some fun in the sun. So I literally like listen to that song like 80 times in a row. So yeah. now we're at the Velvet Rope, and Janet once again has a hidden track. And I don't think I'm going to be obsessed with this song a month from now. It's called uh, Can't Can't Be Stopped. Yep. And I feel like this album, the song... Maybe it should be. I was just going to say the same thing. Maybe it should be stopped. I feel right. like it. I feel like it fell out of Lisa Stansfield's suitcase. <laughs> I love me some Lisa Stansfield. I love some Stansfield, okay. and in and in '97 she had her self titled album that had so many fucking great oh songs my on God. it. She was giving you Barry White realness, and <laughs> I'm leaving, I'm leaving, and so I feel like the instrumental of the song, like if Stansfield came in and did a vocal, I'd be like. Mm-hmm. Bitch, I can't be stopped. But this just was not a song for Janet. I feel like this is a song for Stanzi. <laughs> what well, is that song the real thing on that album? Never mind the stars in the sky. Is anyone else a stand like a huge Stansfield? Oh, yeah. Not uh, not a huge fan, but I do know that one. I'm a fan and I love her first two albums. They're, mm. they're life for me. Um I can see it. I can really see it. I'm okay with this song. I um I I give it a mid, but it's not like like it's not every time. Every time for me is the worst. Right. And to me, these last songs, although they're not in the vein of some of these other iconic songs and legendary songs she has on this album, it's okay. It's you. It, it you can deal with it. It's not. It's not a skip for me just yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, it's a fine bonus track. Exactly. It's 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 no whoops now. But uh, <laughs> but um, if I could change the way, no, I got stamps field in my head to live my life today. I Remember, guess. the you ever see the European version of the video where she's like, If I could, and then she does her eyebrow like to the horns. It's so I watched that part over and fucking over. Good okay, time. sorry, back to Janet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't be stopped. I'm giving it a sideways. Yeah, yeah it sounds that. a little like filler. Yeah. It is a filler. It really is. But, like, we didn't need it. Right. <laughs> we didn't need the fillers. Like, And then there are two more bonus tracks on other editions that, you know, at that point, I was just exhausted. Yeah, I know. There were B-sides. You know, I'm, like, I'm exhausted. I can't possibly. Because it's the next two are Accept Me, which, you know, I'm just too exhausted for it. And the next one is God's stepchild, which I'm like, God, no, please. No. <laughs> yes, it's... Stop. Just stop. God's stepchild. Um, it's cloying. It's such a cloying song. Ugh. Thank God it is not on the official release. Because that you... would give it a star. That would remove a star for me. The premise of the album is that everybody belongs. So maybe Janet felt that way about her songs. Maybe she's like, if everybody belongs and all the songs belong, that the every times had to be next to the rope. But burn. there's always a child you dislike, and you need to put it in the corner <laughs> in a way. <laughs> well, oh, we did I, it. I've been looking forward to the yeah. run from Control to Velvet Rope. Now I still love. I'll fuck with some. No, wait, wait one second, because all for you may not be as strong as those prior albums, but it still <laughs> continues a great legacy. Yeah, I feel like all for you still. Keeping the hot streak. Hey, yes, we still we still have all for you the single, which is like a banger and a half. So yeah, like, got that. We got that to look forward to. And, and okay, so clowns the, the in my over. Her streak is <laughs> over. She does a cute duet with Shaggy that flops, and she yeah. does, and she paid back Black Street and does another another song, which is another flop, and then. She serves. She she comes into the new century and and serves a huge hit by going back into her bag by going into her Janet S sound and doesn't really matter was it and it was from her movie that the she Nutty did Professor something and which she looks so different in that fucking movie like I was like who is that um another bop and a half. I you love know, doesn't really matter. Yeah, Number really one hit. It, it was um, my ex and my song, 
Although we both were hardcore Madonna stands and doesn't really matter was everything to us. Aww. So it's it's a song that means a lot to us. So um yeah. She ended the decade on top. She is the number two female overall for the decade behind, of course, Mariah. And um she came in guns blazing into her third decade. But it wouldn't last. But that's a whole different story. Yep. <laughs> we will get there in two months. Yeah. Yeesh. So how many Jan albums do we have left? Uh, all for you, Demita Joe, 20 YO, Discipline, and Unbreakable. Five more months of Janet. I'm so yep. glad we did this series, y'all. I'm really Janet. enjoying it. Yep. I feel like I feel like we had more tears on the Janet podcast than the, than any of the other ones we've done. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Jimmy, I hope you enjoyed our Janet little Janet family here. Oh, yeah. I definitely, definitely. Appreciate You're welcome, it. of course, to come back for any or all of the other ones if you'd like to. We have some other brothers and sisters that aren't here tonight, but hopefully they'll join. I told them, I said, you can't be doing no Rhythm Nation unless you do fucking discipline. So <laughs> I said I was going to stick on for the whole train and I will be here. Mm-hmm. Me too. All right. Oh, I just love y'all. Let's rate the Velvet Rope. Scale of one to ten. David, you start. Thirteen. It's just, it's career defining. I hate, I hate with a fucking passion when anybody comes to tell me that Janet is not a legend. When she had that type of, of fucking album uh, 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 discography, like this album is everything. Even with the mid songs, even with every time, this album is so important and it needs to be known. I'm so sorry. This is, she's a legend. She will always be a legend. And, and these bitches out here are not putting out velvet rope type of shit. No. And it's she had the ovaries to experiment because Janet could continue making her cute little because of love and escapades and 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 doesn't really matters. But no, she had she when these women, these fucking legends, they hit their 30s and 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 just the shit that they produce is fire. And and, and it's so important. They have a fucking voice and we need to listen. Yeah. I'm so sorry. A a 13 at the least with the mid and every time a 13 like who can do velvet rope nobody can do velvet no rope. one no one no one can do it and that's on wikipedia they're, they're like albums yeah. like lemonade and rated r and no, anti no, no. But let me tell you and i stand let me tell you i stand rihanna hardcore like anti is her best album and anti could be a velvet rope but is not a velvet rope, right. but it is still in the same genre of R&B alternative experimental. Like this album it, it is colossal and it is, it is, it, it, it has influence that is still and felt. Yeah. And it's today. accessible. Yeah, exactly. And it keeps growing with the times too. Cause like an album that speaks louder 20 something years later. Fuck, man. Right. All right, Jimmy, what's your rating? Scale of one to 10. Yeah, we have a 13. I mean, this, <laughs> well, I mean, scale of one to 10. This is a 10 album, definitely. I mean, could it have used some editing? Could there be some fewer interludes? All those things really don't matter because when you have a song with the lyrics up together again and that message, and then, like, my, you know, Velvet Rope, the song, and it just, there are so many moments of sheer genius brilliance that I mean you can't not give it a 10 out of 10. All right. Sharon, you especially shared some vulnerability on this podcast. So I thank you for showing your heart just like Janet did. I love I just love that you're here with us. <laughs> Velvet rope. Oh my god, 10 out of 10. I mean, like this this in some respects I would call her ray of light. I mean, like, it, in some ways, like, I think this was, like, the pinnacle of her career. I mean, I don't want to say that because I think all artists can, are always, like, evolving and, like, 
her next album could be the pinnacle of her career. So I don't want to suggest that this is like all downhill from the, from here, but right. like, this to me was like, like an example of her artistic masterpiece. Like I think all mm-hmm. of the records we talked about up until this point have been like masterpieces. This is sure. this like one of the shining examples of Janet Jackson, in my opinion. And the depth that she hit on this one is like, I mean, almost like almost anyone you talk to about her, like you can, you can, you know, split hairs on her. I don't think anyone would argue with that this record was, you know, was it was a masterpiece. And uh, like, I don't think anyone would argue this is 10 out of 10. This is one of the greatest, records, certainly one of the greatest R&B records of all time. Of all time. Yeah. Well, well I forgot to show my collection. So I have the re- original CD. Australian tour edition two CD. Uh, I have a couple "Got Till It's Gone" singles. Hey. I got my "Together Again" remixes. My "I Get Lonely" single. My "Go Deep" single. My "Every Time" single, and then oh, a nice. rare import the "You" single with the single edit, which is <laughs> a, a rarity a little bit. But "Vela Rope," oh come on, I got to give it a ten. Obviously, this is a ten. Uh, any album that can make you break down in tears on a parking lot. And then every song, like each song is like taking your breath away more and more. Like what I experienced in that car yesterday, I wasn't ready for that kind of like emotional bloodletting. Like Sharon had to, I had to stop my, I had to put on the sunglasses. Sharon had to stop her yoga. <laughs> Whew, I had so, to stop shopping. Yeah, you had to <laughs> stop shopping. Because <laughs> I was shook. I was like, wait. <laughs> wait wait like and it's just like that it's it's just it's so janet to like she uh, she just slips the message and the message is there and you need to just embrace it yeah when when you said in our group chat that you're it was on the store i just thought you're shopping and it was like on in the store i didn't realize like you had your headphones in so no i had my headphones on and i was like for me, when I want to dissect, like I said earlier, when I want to dissect music, I go for a walk and I have to put it on my headphones so I can really, truly like listen to it. I haven't heard Velvet Rope in such a long time. So this was like, I need to pay attention. And just like, just like Janet, just like Rhythm Nation, 18, four, just like Control, going back and listening to these things. And you're like, damn, it takes me right back. Yeah. I was 20 years old. I was I was so excited. I was in my 20s. I was almost 21. I was going to be able to drink legally. <laughs> so it's just like, um, it's something that resonated with me in 97, but it resonates more now. If someone walked up to us like, why are you crying? Oh, I'm just velvet roping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Just velvet roping, that's all. I'm just in a velvet rope type of mood, y'all. <laughs> so I've got my wine glass here. Where exactly would we be shopping when you're listening to on uh, a Joe? <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> At the Piggly Wiggly, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a Waffle House for yeah. that. <laughs> all right, friends. Well, I love y'all. This is, I knew this was going to be a special one. And just like the song special that Sharon convinced me is a thumbs up. Yes. Uh, this podcast <laughs> was one. So I'm going to upload it tonight and I will see you in September in the 2000s with Carly Simon and all for you. <laughs> yeah. Bye, y'all. Bye.